Ah, welcome to Mayhem News Live uh, Wrestling Broadcast 12-10-2013. Uh, this is actually take two. Uh, um, well, actually take three if you want to count. Uh, <laughs> I turned on the camera and started talking. And I was like, man, that camera is mighty, mighty dark. What the? And I realized I forgot to flip the camera around where it would see the front. Okay. Oh, well, there goes it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the show is like, this is being recorded a day late because I did the whole show yesterday and I don't know, I just, I, I guess I, uh, to quote Boogie2988, uh, I just couldn't get into it, I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with some headlines and uh, I know it's past November, but you know, hey. Um, TNA actually drew... Uh, I've got I've got several different reports on their ratings now. The most recent show was a 1.0 rating. All right, the show before that, the one that everybody's talking about, was 0 0.7. <laughs> uh, the show that that looked seriously like they had put all these ideas in a bowl and just pulled them out. It looked <clears throat> awful. Anyway. And then the show before the the really bad Thanksgiving show uh, was a point nine five, so the ratings did go up. <clears throat> so, um, but you know they are they're continuing to have problems with their ratings, and probably will continue to do so until they decide to change something or you know <clears throat> something changes. You know I don't know. Um, but Mickey James, uh, just celebrated her 15 years, uh, in pro wrestling. I want to congratulate her and, um, we were actually planning on doing an interview with her, but, <clears throat> um, this came about the time of her record release and, you know, all this, the touring and stuff that she was doing. So I never heard anything. Uh, one of our co-hosts, uh, uh, he never was on the Google, the ones we did on Google, but from Block Talk Radio, uh, she, Big Dog, Big Thor Dog, actually uh, got her to do a um, <clears throat> um, a design for his online. He does online racing, and uh, <clears throat> if you've never heard of it, uh, it's pretty. It's actually pretty popular. Um, they race in simulators. Um, you know, it's pretty much. It's NASCAR without the, having to spend, you know, millions of dollars to build a car. Um, the gra the graphics are, I mean, some of these computers, it really looks like, you know, you're in a car. If you had a body of a car to sit in, you'd really think. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, the way the car handles and everything is similar. So but he did a uh, Mickey James race car. And we're hoping maybe that we can do something, you know, her later. But uh, <clears throat> um, there's a lot of talk and been a lot of uh, reports on uh, Stephanie McMahon, uh, uh, a lady by the name of Michelle D. Williams, and George Barreras uh, will lead and promote uh, the strategic growth initiatives <clears throat> uh, for WWE. Uh, some of those that were mentioned were renegotiation of their four major uh, TV rights contracts. Um, they're hoping to have that done sometime in 2014. And <clears throat> the one that all the fans want to hear about is uh, some of the things that are happening in the background kind of make you wonder if maybe the WWE Network may be fixing to... Uh, <clears throat> but um, um, let's see. They've In 2014, in February of 2014, they're going to cancel... Uh, classics on demand. You won't be able to get that anymore. Um, most people are heralding that this is going to be uh, that when they get rid of classics, that means the network's going to come out. Which, you know, we know they're still working on it. They they implicably, you know, can't tell us when or where, or, you know. <clears throat> but a lot of people are pointing at the fact that WWE uh, has planned an event at the International CES Consumer and Electronics Trade Show that's taking place uh, in February of 2014. Also, <clears throat> and 
And a lot of people are saying that uh, it, it kind of may buy, maybe that's when they're planning on announcing uh, a tentative date for release. They don't think it's going to release on that date, but it may. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> since we're talking about the network, uh, there are a lot of people saying that uh, it may not come through your cable company. Um, there are, WWE itself has actually said that they are, they are weighing all options. Uh, one of those options is a total digital network. In other words, um, whatever you can get digital programming on, your Xbox, your PlayStation, um, your your DVR, or, I mean your uh, Blu-ray, some Blu-rays are hooked to the internet, your smart TV, whatever you can get digital programming, that the WWE Network might be a literal digital broadcasting. I mean, it'll be everywhere, you know. Uh, <clears throat> this would uh, relinquish them from some of the constraints of actually doing it on a, on a network. Uh, they could do pretty much what they wanted because it's digital. Um, <clears throat> so we'll just have to see. <clears throat> I can't wait because if if they do what they say, they're gonna they they they've hinted about about the pay per views that that there may be up just to four major pay per views. Uh, that you may have to buy, but then there's other people saying that you won't have to pay for nothing but WrestleMania, because the price that you pay for your <clears throat> your your subscription to the WWE Network will cover all the rest. So we'll just have to see. Um, <clears throat> see, uh, Jim Norton, who is uh, one of the hosts of the Opie and Anthony show. Oh man, he ripped. I listened to some of that show. He ripped into TNA. Um, you would have thought he was a paper shredder. It was just, he talked about the Ethan Carter three series and, um, I got some issues about that too. Cause all he is, is a Ryback without the one piece. I mean, seriously. And the fact that they're pushing him as Dixie Carter's nephew makes, just makes my mouth. Ugh. I mean, it, the last show that I watched, you know, he literally he said he was going to face someone that had been in the ring with Andre the Giant. And, and we all know that Herb, the main referee, the older guy that's on TNA, he's been everywhere. He's been with WWE. He's been with TNA. I mean, the man has literally done everything he actually this ethan guy actually had a match with him made him lay down and had his son count him <clears throat> i mean yes it was a it was a bathroom break because it was pretty much detestable but it's it's stupid and then he would they would bring him in and say he's gonna face a local talent which means some some guy that works in the back got a chance to get out in the ring, but he had to, you know, he had to pretty much lay down for this guy. I, this is what they call TNA trash character development. It is useless. It's worthless. And we hate it. Thank God they actually kind of moved on away from that. Now, I know with Ryback, there were some issues that <clears throat> he was a little stiff. Um, he hit, you know, he hit a little stiff, but, you know, people got past that. The bigger talents didn't really want to work with him because they were afraid they were going to get hurt. Um, Ryback's a big guy, you know. Uh, but anyway, I, I just think it's, but he ripped into them really bad. He talked about uh, a lot of the wrestlers' problems. Now, the only thing he did leave out is the fact that Jeff Hardy went through rehab and Jeff Hardy has been on the, the, the narrow road. Um, I'm actually proud of Jeff Hardy being able to overcome or at least control his demons. He's actually doing better than his brother did. So, you know, Hey, all power to him. And Kurt Angle admitted that he was, he was out of line. He was, you know, he needed to do this and, you know, and I think maybe that Kurt Angle being a little older, you know, and seeing the errors of his ways, we hope. But now he was on, you know, they talked about Sting and, you know, basically said that Sting was, you know, with Hogan gone, 
their only really major talent. I mean, there's there's like five to six guys in TNA that I think could do well anywhere. Sting, Bobby Roode, Magnus, Samoa Joe, AJ. and AJ Styles. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I don't mention some other people in there is because Christopher Daniels has already been other places. We know he can be be successful. And, of course, you know, I only wanted to list five because I'm not going to sit here and list the whole thing. But, you know, you've got honorable mentions that didn't make that five. Kazarian, um, James Storm, Gunner. You know, if you could do a top ten, you could actually fill that up pretty fast anyway. But <clears throat> it's just the fact that they're, all, they're where they're at. And <clears throat> Dixie Carter uh, applicably denies that they're up for sale. Uh, well, I'm telling you, Dixie, do us a favor. Sell it to somebody that knows what the hell they're doing or at least has the passion and to know about the, even if they're not in the business, if they have the passion enough, you can learn the business. I mean, seriously, you, you've already done the right thing. You've gotten rid of Bischoff and you know, my, everybody knows how I feel about Hogan. But if Hogan's going to be on TV, he needs to be in WWE. Hogan is too big for TNA. Okay. Now, people say, well, Sting's there. Yeah, but Sting started out, you know, in the small little, 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 little companies like that and worked his way up. He's been everywhere. <clears throat> Hogan, you know, just he, he needs to be in WWE. If he's going to be anywhere, uh, we prefer him at the house on the couch, but at least that's my opinion now. But, you know, it's just this crap. They, I mean, you know, but anyway, he tore into them. He tore into TNA really, really bad. And they, they showed where Jeff Hardy came out during the pay-per-view. And, you know, he was apparently on some things. And this was right before his rehab the last time. And you could see the look on Sting's face. He was pretty frustrated. He was pretty just... Because, you know, this is a main event, and they literally had to drag this out so the fans didn't tear that place apart. It was just ridiculous. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to talk about TNA. There's this weird promo that played about, you know, AJ not being here. It's kind of futuristic. Uh, uh, it was actually a great, great, great promotional video. It was just... Um, didn't really make any sense. <laughs> anyway, um, Angle got a good reaction from the crowd, but it actually could have been better. Uh, the heat between him and Magnus, you know, and a lot of the former uh, Mafia members are actually starting to build up. Um, you know, there for a while they were trying to, you know, even though the Mafia had pretty much gone separate ways, they were trying to say, well, you know, well, they're still friends, they're still friends, you know. Well, after the the hardcore match, the the match between um, Magnus and Samoa Joe, <laughs> there could be no uh, kidding around that, that basically, you know, they were still friends because <laughs> Samoa Joe just, you know, he I think Mag Magnus ended up winning, but um, Samoa Joe got his licks in really good. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, they had a tables match for the uh, uh, heavyweight championship tournament. Um, Hardy uh, defeats uh, Rude. Uh, it's kind of a Daniel Bryan. I mean, uh, the Big Show Daniel Bryan thing. Uh, Hardy kind of does a drop kick and uh, makes Rude fall off the mat. Uh, the mat, and actually he lands in a table, which causes the the, the loss. And um, needless to say, he was pretty pissed off about it. Um, DC Carter comes on and she basically says that she contacted, uh, as you know, AJ Styles is supposedly left with a belt. A straight out of WWE CM Punk leaves the WWE with a belt. I mean, straight out. I mean, almost identical storyline. And apparently she had sent him a thing saying if he didn't bring the belt back, you know, and then she got this package that the delivery guy was here and, Oh, she was so excited, and this rock star spud, we'll talk about him in a minute. This rock star spud was, oh, he was so excited, and 
And, you know, and basically she thinks it's the belt. And apparently when she opens it up, it was a toy belt. So, I mean, we all know that this is going to end up being almost identical to, um, I've seen some of the stuff from the taping for the Christmas, you know, the Christmas week show and stuff. We all know that AJ's going to come back and then they're going to have to have a champ, champion versus champion. Anyway, I actually know who, who wins the tournament, but I'm not going to say it because that would be wrong. Anyway, <clears throat> um, uh, but basically what I was saying a while ago, the Carter guy is a joke. Uh, his storyline, you know, at least, I mean, the guy looks like he's got skills. He's in good shape. Hold on. I'm drinking coffee. But the guy, the guy's in shape and everything. It's just the storyline is so crappy. It's pitiful. I mean, he's Ryback. Except, you know, with this lame nephew of the boss storyline. It's just... Um... And then they've got this guy, Rockstar Spud. Now, Rockstar Spud can actually wrestle. He was part of the UK um, boot camp. I mean, he can actually wrestle. Why they're having him doing this chief of staff, I guess because Kane is head of operations. Okay, here we'll compare. WWE has Kane. Chief of Operations. TNA has Rockstar Spud. Well, anyway, <clears throat> basically, he runs around like a chicken with his head cut off on, on Red Bull and crack and, and basically bounces off the wall. And uh, it's just. Anyway. Um, Rockstar Spud should pretty much be diced up, boiled, and made into potato salad. Anyway. Um, and then you got this thing with bad influence picking on Joseph Park, you know, and I think we're about to come to a head on this whole, uh, Joseph Park and Abyss thing, and which I'm kind of excited about. Uh, to be frankly honest, this, um, Kazarian and, and Daniel is actually, uh, are, they teeter on fat shaming toward, um, Joseph Park, which... You know, in my opinion, is is doesn't need to be on TV. However, the fact that I'm going to get to see Abyss pretty much disassemble them two, I think it's worth it. Um, you know, uh, they're poking and then they're trying to find out. Uh, they poured blood over his head. You know, um, uh, a la Carrie. You know, night. <laughs> and it didn't it didn't set him off you know so they say that abyss is gone that abyss doesn't exist anymore and yeah well um okay the fact that the bromance has the title is not my problem the fact that they have the title and they're facing people like james storms and gunner and still have the title um i think it's crap it's stupid and it's not believable um, I don't know anything about Jesse, the other guy that's in the bromance. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't. But the other guy, the one with the spiky hair, and I don't know, I just, I, my wife's met him, and he was a weenie, really. I mean, if you're going to be rude to your fans, don't be rude to the kids. <clears throat> yeah, she, she went to, uh, another, um, she met him at Blizzard Brawl. And what's his name again? Robbie E. Yeah, Robbie E. She met Robbie E. And he was actually rude, rude to some of the kids, you know. And, you know, that's just, you know, if it had been my kid, I'm going to be honest, he wouldn't have been rude to no more kids because he'd have been in the back seeing the trainer. Anyway, <clears throat> um, let's see. Overall, the TNA show was actually good compared to the, Point zero, I mean the the point seven show that they had the week. You know, it was just ugly. It was actually a decent show. And uh, um, let's see, we're gonna go on to SmackDown now. Um, WWE needs to learn there are certain people that you don't give a mic. 
If Brock Lesnar walks out to the ring, the first thing you don't do is give him a mic. You you call Paul Heyman out and let Paul Heyman do the talking because, mm, anyway. Well, as far as Randy Orton's wrestling skills, they're they're good. Okay, um, I do think that WWE does this signature move stuff in in the ring a little too often, uh, but. When you give Randy Orton, and I agree with Rihanna Mater, uh, you can follow her on Twitter, that's at Rihanna Mater. Uh, why give him a microphone? He's only going to say the same thing he did in the last hundred, hundred promos, pretty much the same thing. He's going to lick his lips a lot and, you know, twitch his face a little bit, and then he's going to say the same crap over and over. I mean, you got people like, and, and you know, I have people I can compare to, uh, Dusty Rhodes, Goldust, even Cody, Sandow. I mean, you've got some guys out there that can cut a promo. And you put him up against Randy Orton. Okay, i got to admit, I'm kind of sick of John Cena. But the John Cena-Randy promo at the end of Raw yeah. was a standing ovation. Yeah. And when you give, here's, here's my, okay, okay. This is me on a good promo. This is me on Randy Orton. I mean, seriously, he's going to say the same thing. You could just record it and say, hey, Randy Orton's doing a promo and pick up your phone. Okay, I'll play the video because it's the same thing. I mean, you could put them right beside each other. I mean, you know. And then, you know, this one of the. Now, he's got better mic skills than Lesnar because he says the same thing every time. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I like I like Randy Orton, okay? But, you know, he's kind of got away, got into this rut. You know. Now, the best thing that happened on SmackDown, one of the main things, non-wrestling, was that during the promo at the start of the show, uh, where Randy Orton was doing his thing, you know, uh, Brian, Daniel Bryan comes out, who, I'm going to be honest... When when he was short haired and didn't have the beard, I didn't like Daniel Bryan. Okay, but this constant smiling and from people, you know, him smiling all the time—that's funny. It's fucking Brie Bella. Uh, he come he comes out. He tells Randy Orton, "You need to apologize to the fans." And you know, Orton's got this as usual confused look on his face. For impersonating a champion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. It really was. Uh, Big E is continuing his push and by defending fan, uh, defeating Fandango. Uh, no big surprise there. I mean, I, I got to where I like Fandango a little bit. Especially after seeing him on the Total Diva show and realizing that he takes this character... You know, very, very seriously. Okay? And uh, that, that, that to me, that's, that's, that's important. You know, if you're willing enough to take, it goes back to people that played characters before. You know, the people that, that made people famous just by doing their character right. Uh, but, uh, okay. Uh, Goldust and Cody defeated Axel and Ryback, um, as usual. Their in-ring moves with Goldust having this rejuvenated, I mean, he's moving around better than he was when he was young. Um, this His change in his lifestyle as far as his exercise routine and his the DDP yoga and, you know, he is doing things. I mean, he's doing a, a flying body press back and doing a rolling flying body press off the top rope. And uh, the fans are like, wow. I mean, it's it's really good. It's good to see them on TV. It's good for them to get a slammy. I mean, it's really good. I, I think it's great. You know, and um, I think that uh, it's probably one of the best things WWE has done in the last, th you know, six months. Seriously. Um, but I have to tell you, uh, but that uh, I just can't wait to see what happens between, you know, with them and the tag champions and, you know. 
Um, CM Punk defeats Ambrose. Uh, it seems to me that the Shield's armor, as far as their relationship with between each other, are starting to kind of conflict to me. Um, Dean Ambrose has got a little, little big-headed. And um, I really can't wait to see them split up because... I think Roman Reigns is going to rule ass. I mean, he's going to be, he's going to kick some ass. Um, which, you know, would be a family tradition. Uh, so, um, always good to see Natalia on TV. Uh, but when you team her up with, with uh, somebody that's been in the business and around the business like Tamina, it just makes the match better. You know. Uh, I really think that maybe they're going to let Natalia get the Divas Championship. And, um, you know, don't get me wrong, I like AJ, but I think it's time for Natalia to hold the title for a while. You know. Um, and Orton gets the win over Brian in the main event. So uh, it was a decent show. I, I, out of a 10, I'd give it about a, a 7, 7.1 maybe. It was It was a decent show. You know, where TNA, TNA's rating was probably a five, maybe a early six, maybe. Um, we're going to move on to Raw. Raw is kind of a toss up. Um, there's three hours of Raw, okay? And I know they're trying to incorporate the fact that it's a slammy show into their, the, you know, the fact that this, the programming, it's a slammy show, but it's also Raw. But the way they did things, you know, they put the slammies ahead of the matches. And as much as we like to see the slammies, uh, we're actually wanting to see the wrestling more. So the, the, the wrestling shows were kind of, the wrestling matches were actually lost in the show to me. Even though they were there. You know, it was just, I don't know. Um, Goldust, and I hate to tell him, you know, but John Cena versus The Rock the second time it was not the match of the year. The match of the year was when Cody and Goldust took on uh, Rollins and Ambrose, I mean Rollins and Reigns for the tag titles, okay, at Battleground. That was the match of the year. It should have been the, they should have a new one, the comeback of the year. So, I, I, I'm i sorry, that's my opinion. And even Cena seemed like, he was like, I don't really think I should be winning this, but hey. Um, uh, I think the, ma the way they should have done it was they should have done, took one hour of Raw, and said, hey, uh, we're going to do the slammings. Or put it at the end. You know, that way they could have moved right on into this big interview they had at the end. And everything would have been good to me. That was just, that's just my opinion. <coughs> CM Punk had a second match with Ambrose. And there kind of seemed to be a little, um, a little miscommunication or misunderstanding between the S.H.I.E.L.D. members. Uh, which gave CM Punk the win. Um... And, when, you know, of course, Goldust, Cody, and Big Show teamed up, you know, and, of course, looked great. Uh, it was great. It was actually a decent match. Awesome. Uh, lots of action, you know. Um, but, and then, you know, it's like I said before, WWE needs to face it that Orton's promos are weak, boring. Um, even the fans during the last segment were kind of, oh. He's got a microphone again. You know, that's literally the way they the way they looked. And, um, you know, you, you've heard one, you've heard them all. Um, and as my, as my wife and Kim was talking about earlier, okay, Cena, who don't get me wrong, uh, sometimes I think he's, you know, everybody gets a little tired of him on occasion. Um... But Cena cut a kick-ass promo. Not only did he put over the match that's coming up Sunday. And, you know, Cena, he got me that close to wanting to get that pay-per-view. That close. 
missed it by that much. I mean, a great promo, but just wasn't good enough to maybe convince me yet to get that pay-per-view. Not only did he put over the pay-per-view, but he put over the pa all the putting over the past and future talent. He talked about CM Punk. He talked about uh, Ziggler. He talked about uh, Bret Hart. He talked about everyone. He put he put it out on the line, and I don't know. Uh, either Randy got this amazing. I mean, he he can, you know, his facial expressions are unique. But yeah, I, I kind of wonder if he didn't really get pissed off in that promo. And then the mat, the way the the inner segment entered, where, uh, you know, Randy Orton pushed CM Punk first, and. You know, Punk kind of popped him in the head a couple of times. And then Triple H throwed CM Punk. And CM Punk was like, oh, hell no. And then, of course, you had Shawn Michaels, you know, sweet chin music, CM Punk. And which we all, I knew when he turned around, Danny Bryan was already in midair. Hit him in the face with the, the flying knee, you know. And then uh, Randy Orton actually pushed somebody into Stephanie McMahon. And I knew... It's not good because we were all asking ourselves before I actually watched Raw. I didn't watch it live, the last part of it. Um, why everybody was talking about that Triple H pedigreed Randy Orton, and we know why he hit Stephanie. He pushed somebody into Stephanie, and they ended the show that way. But uh, I, I, they still haven't convinced me to get the pay per view. Um, so, but that's been that's pretty much the show notes for today. Uh, for this take three, um, <laughs> I just couldn't get into it last night. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, I want to talk about our sponsors. Make sure you check out ZachPackPromotions.com. Uh, you can follow them on Twitter at, at ZachPackPromotions. And, oh, excuse me. Um, it's at ZPackPromotions. Yes. Let me correct that on Twitter. And you can also find them, ZachPackPromotions, on Facebook. And if you give them a like, make sure you let them know that we sent you. I um, also want to talk about our next sponsor, which is um, fightdisabilityslurs.wordpress.com. This is a site that my wife runs and I help her with. We're trying to stop all all slurs, period, but and trying to educate people how slurs hurt people. But we're we're really our hearts really on the disability slurs because our son has Down syndrome, um, and to me. Uh, you know, it, it, that, it just bothers me when somebody says certain words or certain jokes. And, you know, sorry. I have a knee-jerk reaction with that. But, um, and our last one, the song that you heard at the first of the show um, was uh, Throttle. It's a song called New Blood by Throttle. And they helped us sponsor that song, give us that song for our uh, theme song. And I really appreciate it. They've got some great music if you're into heavy heavy metal or you know heavy I mean it's it's pretty heavy but it's it's damn good music. Um it's something that you could work out to really. Um but uh they have a new album called Razor Wire Finish Line. Uh right now when I talked to to Mike Filler, uh he told me that they're right now all they were doing was uh putting it on Amazon, they were putting it on iTunes and then uh, they have some. They actually have some CDs, but they're using them in in their their gigs. You know, when they go out and do do song, do shows, they give they sell them at the gigs. So um, I can understand that it's expensive to produce CDs. Uh, so you know, especially on a mass production scale, like most people would think you had to do. But I want to thank Throttle for giving me that. Uh, you can also follow them on Facebook. Uh, at the end of this show. I have I put up some some uh, ad banners for my sponsors, um, and their websites and stuff are on there, and all the links to Amazon and iTunes and stuff like that. All right, I want to give a shout out to some friends from Ireland, uh, the Blast Fifty Two band. Um, their main Twitter is at Blast Fifty Two, and then you can follow Stephanie on her. The drummer Stephanie is at Blast Fifty Two Drummer. Uh, they got some great stuff. If you'll go to YouTube and type in Blast 52, you can actually hear some of their songs from their new album. 
the new EP, uh, We Can Pretend. And I, I really think that you'll enjoy the music. Uh, it's got a good sound. They were on a radio show, not the Block Talk, I think. I'm not sure when it was. I think it was last week sometime. But, um, you know, I'm like the guy the, uh, that was on the radio show. I mean, I, I, I like their music. It's, it's pretty decent. It really is. It's good something. Something to listen to in the car. It's something to listen to on your iPod. It's something to listen to, you know, on your Android phones, your headphones. Uh, it really does a good thing. But you can follow them on Facebook, and then I'll have their links for their Amazon and iTunes, you know. And um, I want to give a shout-out to Chance Prophet, who sent me uh, the story about the little boy, Gabe Lyall. Um, him and his family are in a fight for their fight for his life he has childhood cancer uh, i don't list any links because they are just getting inundated with with emails and some of them aren't exactly on point so uh, i've just kind of want to get it out there kind of give your thoughts or prayers toward him you know to kind of help him out but that's been the show for today i really really appreciate everyone who listens and and you know ch checks us out on youtube but um uh, I just got a little note. We're hoping sometime in July to go back live on Google Plus. Uh, I plan on buying a computer sometime around July, so and getting all that stuff set back up. So uh, maybe you'll get to see me and Stacy Lynn, and we will actually start looking for our next co-host um, to help us out. So uh, cross your fingers, and I uh, appreciate it. And thanks very much. I will talk to you later.